And if you work with a lot of transaction type data, such as bank transactions, invoices, that sort of thing, you're going to be dealing with dates all the time. Now, in many cases, the Excel files you're going to have or the spreadsheets you're going to have are going to have the dates in wrong formatting or in an odd type of formatting where Excel doesn't really recognize them or show them as dates. I'm going to show you with this example here. You can download the, the spreadsheet for exercises on the course portal. And there's going to be five tabs here. We're going to show the five examples. So one, we're going to fix the formatting. So anytime you see a date represented in 40,000 and something number, that's because the date's being represented in the numerical mathematical version of the date in Excel. And the way it works is it does basically the number of days since January 1st, 1901. That's how Excel works. That's how they figured out how to do it. The reason why Excel needs to see that internally as a number is so I can do mathematical equations with it. So if you wanted to know how many days were, were between July 27th and August uh, 30th or something like that, Excel needs to take the numerical representation of each of the dates and then minus them and then give you that number different. So it is the number of days since January 1st, 1901. So we're going to show you how to change that uh, briefly. Now, in the next uh, exercise here, we're going to take a, a bunch of dates that are missing the year. So basically, it's just showing month and day. So how do we add that year? So Excel sees that as a complete date. In other cases, you're going to have dates represented with some strange characters like a period, a hyphen, in some cases, just a space. Um, so how do we remove that or replace that so Excel recognizes it as a date? In other cases, the dates are showing correctly, but they're not showing as a date from a, a Excel perspective. In other words, if you actually try to minus any of the two, you don't get a mathematical answer because they're just displayed as text. So we'll show you how to change that. And then lastly, what if your dates are represented across multiple fields? Like one column is showing the month, another column is showing the day, another column is showing the year, that sort of thing. So let's start with the formatting. In many ways, this is really the easiest one to fix. Anytime you see a date column that contains 40,000 something, that's probably correct. It's a date, it's just on the wrong formatting. So all you have to do is select the column, click on the Home tab, and then change it from General or whatever other formatting it is to short date. As soon as you do that, it will change the dates and show them correctly. Another way you quickly know that dates are, are, are correct is if you see them all aligned to the right side. Typically, uh, dates that are correct are aligned to the right side. If you look at this one, this one that's shown as text, notice that these are aligned on the left side. Now, left and right alignment doesn't always mean whether the date is correct or not. It's just one way of seeing it. I'm going to hit Control Z and undo for a second just so I can show you something. Another way of changing the formatting is to select the date uh, range or the all the rows that have dates or the entire uh, column altogether and then hit Control 1 on your keyboard. That takes you to the format cells window. You can change the category of the formatting from general or whatever else it is now to date and that would be good enough. Once you change it to date, there's different types of date formats you can use and you can pick any of the current uh, date formats that are there. So if you wanted to start with a four year year, four digit year, and if you wanted to maybe just skip uh, the, the year but maintain the year information sort of behind the scenes, if you wanted to use uh, two letter uh, month, two letter day and then uh, two letter year. That's a multiple options there. So we click OK and then we pick the actual formatting that we want. So those are the two ways to to change it from the numerical format to the date format if the dates are already shown correctly in Excel. Let's go to the next tab and talk about missing year. This is a bit more complex. This actually contains uh, sort of multiple moving parts. So we'll talk about that. So what we do, uh, generally speaking, is we're going to change uh, this by really adding more information, we're gonna add the year in it. So what we'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and select the next column over and right click and click insert. So I, I create a new column. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a formula, the date formula to extract information from that cell and put it where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna start with equals date and that's the function, the date function. And the way you organize it is you put the year, then the month and then the date. 
So let's say I know that the year is 2020, just to get to, to use for the example. So I'll put there 2020. So I just type that in there. That's a simple thing. Then I'm going to hit comma, and then I need the month. So I need to extract the month from that uh, column. So there's a couple of ways to do it. In, in this particular case, you notice it's very, very simple. You see that the first two digits is the month. So all I have to do is use a left formula. So I'm going to do left. Okay, open parentheses, select that cell. Then I'll hit comma. And the number of characters will be two. So by doing that, I'm saying, hey, give me the first two characters from left to right and put it inside of where that month is supposed to be. Then I'm going to hit comma and then I'll use the right formula for this. So I'll do right. I'll select the same cell, hit a comma, and then number of characters, I'll put two and then I'll close parentheses. So this says take for my month, take the first two characters of that cell for my day, take the last two characters. And then I'll hit enter and enter and that will return the correct date. So as soon as that correct date is returned, I'm going to go ahead and open up the cell here for a second and open the formula again so you can see it uh, with clarity. So um, the, the, what I want to do now is once I'm, this is working correctly, I'm going to select that cell. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to select that cell. I'm going to click on the pull handle uh, right under the date, top uh, on the bottom right. Click on that pull handle and hold, click and hold and drag all the way down and Excel is going to repeat the formula throughout every single row. Another way of doing it is just by double clicking on that little square and that little pull handle and it'll out of fill that information. Then at that point, I'm going to select the entire uh, row here. I, I can hit copy and then select the entire column again and do a paste special uh, values and hit OK. And um, that way we have no more formulas there. So once we have no more formulas, I can select my uh, my old date column that's missing the year, delete that, and then just title this date. So that's one way of doing it. I mean, there's multiple ways to do it really, but that's just one simple way of doing it. Uh, I'm gonna show you one more way of doing it. Let me hit undo until we get back to where we were. There we go. Well, I'm gonna make this a bit different. I'm gonna do some insert two columns in here and I'm going to do something called a text to columns. So what I'll do is I'm going to select the entire column here. I want to click on data. Then I'll click on text to columns. And then I'm going to tell Excel to do a delimited uh, separation of the cells based on a specific character. So I'm going to click on next and then I'm going to say, look, the delimiter to separate those two characters it's going to be, and I'll put under other, I'll just put a forward slash. So basically I'm telling Excel, hey, if there's a forward slash, split the information across two different uh, columns. So I'm going to click on finish, and that essentially does that. Now I'm just going to, to simplify here, I'm going to change the date formatting uh, back to general here, so just you can see it. So now what this has done is, now this is showing a seven, just a regular seven as the month, and then a 19 for the day. So at that point, I can use the same formula, uh, the date formula. I'll type here 2020, hit comma, select the month here. At this point, I don't have to do the left to right formula because I've done text to columns to split off the information. And I'll, I'll do comma and then select the date and close parentheses. So that will give you uh, that version of fixing it uh, that way. So I'm going to just autofill the formulas here, select the entire column, copy, and then pay special values. And that's essential whenever you have a formula uh, dependent on other columns or other cells. And then I want to delete the cell, so I don't want that formula to get all messed up. Let me just show you uh, real quick. If I don't paste the values, and then I select these two columns here and delete them, my formula uh, gets broken, basically. So that's essential. Um, if you plan to delete the source information or formulas you've created, to do the copy and paste values, or paste special values, so you don't miss that. So I'm gonna delete that, and I'll give a title to that date, perfect. Now notice when I select the entire uh, data set here, and I go into data and filter, you will notice that when I click on the uh, drop down menu next to date, notice how the dates are organized by hierarchy. You see the year, then the month, and then the dates. 
That's one of the ways you can quickly tell that Excel has a correct formatting for the dates. Because if I go to uh, the next uh, tab here, or the next worksheet that says periods, if I do the same exercise, select the entire uh, date range here, and then I click on filter, and then I click on the drop down filter next to transaction date, notice that I don't get the year, month, day hierarchy, I just get all the possible fields that, that are there on the filter. That's another way you can tell that the formatting, uh, it's wrong. So how do we fix uh, dates that have those uh, period or hyphen or some other random character that's not supposed to be there? So there's actually a couple ways to do it. Easiest way is to select the entire column, hit Control F uh, on your keyboard, click on Replace, so that's gonna be Find and Replace. Find what? Find a period. I literally just typed a period there and replace it with a forward slash. Again, I literally just typed a forward slash there. When I click on replace all, Excel does two things. One, it replaces the characters, and two, it assumes that what you're trying to do is fix it for dates, and it reformats uh, to dates for you. So when I actually click on that and click on the filter, notice that this has been correctly formatted for the dates. I'm gonna hit uh, undo there, just so I'm gonna do one more example. Uh, the other thing we could do, if we're doing it like this, is I'm gonna insert uh, three columns here, and I'm gonna click on insert, and then I'm gonna select the entire column here with the dates, and I'm gonna go to text to columns, and then I'm gonna click on delimited, click on next, and then this time around is gonna be a period. So I'm gonna say, hey, just separate them based on period, and then I'll click on uh, next or finish, and it went ahead and it split off my three, uh, my three uh, numbers, the month, the day, and the year, and then at this point, I use the same date formula that we've been using all along. Select the cell for the year, cell for the month, and cell for the day. Press enter, uh, click on the pull handle and drag down, or double click to auto fill, and that will bring that in. I'm gonna show you one more using the same issue. Let me hit undo here a couple of times to get back to where we were. All right, so we're back to uh, no date formatting. So we're gonna use text to columns, but this time around, we're not gonna split off the data and then use a formula to put it back together. Text to columns can actually fix dates all within itself. So I'm gonna click on the entire column that has the dates, go to the data tab, and then I'm gonna click on text to columns. So I'll click on text to columns, and then I'm gonna do delimit it one more time. I'll hit next. But then this time around, I'm gonna do something even more interesting. I'm gonna uncheck other, then I'm gonna click on next, and then I'm gonna say column data format, I'm gonna select date. So this time around, I actually didn't I choose what was what, I just did that, and I click on finish, and that will fix it for me. So Excel has built in into text to columns, sort of a smart way of saying, yeah, you know, I think what you're trying to do is fix a date anyway, because it's such a common uh, issue. So that's how you do that. Now I'm gonna go to the next tab over here, the next worksheet, and let's talk about dates as text. So in this one right here, it looks like the dates are good. I'm gonna select the entire data range again, and then I'm gonna click on filter, and then click on the drop down filter next to transaction date, and show you that this is not fixed by hierarchy, just kind of to prove to you that this is not a date. It's a couple ways to do it. One is I can click on each one, go into the actual cell, and press enter. Excel knows when I try to edit one by one to fix that because that's likely to be a date. But that will take a very long time. Another way of doing it is I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, a new column, I'm gonna create a new column. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna do equals, select that cell and multiply it times one. Somehow, I don't know why, where the logic is, Excel knows that if I have a date type of date and I multiply it times one, it'll convert it to date format for me and I'll click uh, the pull handle to autofill and show you the filter how now it's been fixed. So a couple ways to do it uh, like that, that's actually pretty simple. And the last one is, let's go to multiple fields. So we kind of use this example. What if the information is across multiple fields? In this particular case, we don't have, let's say a clean uh, numerical month, we have maybe a text month. So a couple things that we can do is we can create a new column here. And this was a little bit tricky because it's not really that obvious. The way you convert a text month into a numerical month is to use the following formula. We're gonna do equals month, open parentheses, then we're gonna select 
the uh, the cell that has the word uh, July or whatever the month date is. And then we're going to click on, we're going to type an and sign and then a one. Now, I don't know the logic behind this, why this works this way, but when I press enter, this will actually, let me change the column uh, formatting to uh, number. The, for some reason, when you do that, when you hit month, inside of it, you select the column and add a one, it will convert it to a numerical month. So I'll press enter and then click and drag down, and that's going to show me that month uh, throughout. So then at this point, all I would have to do is do a date, type the year manually, or select it from a cell if it happens to be there, then use the month, uh, the cell, and the and one in there as we shown uh, before, then comma, and then the date, and then I'll press enter, hit yes, select the entire column, change this to date format, and then I'll click and drag the formula that's there. And then as we've done with the other examples, select the entire column, copy, paste, special, delete the other two, and then give this a title date. Just to double check that these are working correctly, let me go to the filter one more time and check that these are in hierarchical values. So that's a couple of examples of how you uh, fix uh, or clean up dates in Excel. Hey, if you watched the whole video and you liked it, make sure you hit like uh, down there in the like button somewhere. Hit subscribe. I am going to post a couple, maybe two a month of a small Excel tutorials like this. Uh, wh however, if, um, if you want in-depth training on uh, all other, uh, what I consider to be essential ex advanced Excel training for accountants, consider joining my course. The link is going to be on the description. Just click on that and sign up for that. We're going to cover VLOOKUPs, uh, pivot tables, uh, filtering, and for the most part is to clean up data such as bank transactions, invoices, accounting data from other systems that we need to clean up because we want to do a quick report uh, based on that information or summarizing the information or cleaning up data prior to importing it into an accounting system like importing into QuickBooks or something like that. In the same course, we also talk about exporting data from accounting system like QuickBooks and using pivot tables to show reports that maybe your accounting system uh, cannot show. So anyway, hit like, subscribe. On the comments below, tell me what other type of small uh, type of videos are essential for you, especially if you're an accounting professional, what, what are the important Excel things you need to learn and uh, hopefully uh, join or, or sign up for my program that contains the more in-depth type training. Thanks.